am i audible hello yeah so yes you are thank you yes yes thank you thank you so uh, good evening all and uh, thank you for joining this webinar so today's webinar is on tailored project management with er phoenix so uh, before we start with the webinar uh, let me share you some about some of the uh, members have joined those who don't know about the uh, indic trans and er phoenix let me share about some insights about indic trans so let me share my screen uh i think my screen is visible to you all no no not yet okay it's coming i think uh, due to some internet connectivity issues uh, i may have to close my uh screen can it is it visible to you all huh? yes it is visible yeah yeah thank you thank you so so let me share you about some uh, insights about the indic trans so uh, indic trans is one of the youngest workforce and fastest growing technology company and uh, we have done 400 plus implementations and uh, for 400 plus clients and 70 plus client locations globally and we have a stronger team of 85 plus team of experts so this team includes the uh, functional consultants uh, business analysts and uh, the uh, project managers the development team so profit development team as well so uh, indicrans has been working on various domain from for, from last 14 years uh, which includes manufacturing banking supply chain e-commerce information technology and government so uh, i think my screen is visible and this you can see this uh, changing of the screens so the global we have a global clients uh, like night frank touch magic alan sari solar square and dfm foods so the and the, we have the clients from borens like uh, alan sari and qr card so we also have some public sector client uh, which includes the uh, the central government uh, department textile committee and uh, new india assurance then the national institute of industrial engineering and so on so uh, maybe you may have uh, known that indic trans is working on the uh, last 14 years as i told uh, so back that we are working on 14 uh, from last 14 years and uh, so uh, earlier we have started with the uh, government plans and then afterwards we started working on the uh, enterprise plans from 2012 and we have uh, for uh, in 2012 uh, we have developed the web notes which is of the uh, which is earlier known for the appendix version so then we became a two, in 2021 we became the bronze partner uh, then in 2022 we became silver partner and now we are the certified gold partner uh, so maybe some of you may not be uh, known about the er phoenix so er phoenix is an open source 100 percent open source erp system so uh, which is a gartner rated er phoenix uh, ERP. and uh, as er phoenix has been rated among top performing software by data uh, over four to five thousand plus companies have made themselves ready with the ERP next. So why ERP next? So highlight the features. We can say that centralized process. So uh, some of the clients or the we work with are uh, using uh, multiple uh, ERPs and they don't have a centralized process. So this gives the centralized process. Uh, then real time data for better decision making single integrated ERP, real-time customized information. 
So these are the some of the highlighted features which ERBNX provides. So in Nicrans, as we have said, from 2010, we are working with the ERP Next. So Indictrans has been providing various services from implementation, customization, development, consultancy. And uh, so the, this is about the Indictrans and just wanted to let you know about the upcoming event of Frappeverse, the Frappes event, uh, which is on September 8 and 9. I hope you all will join for this uh, conference. Uh, so let's talk about, talk about the webinar, today's webinar. So today the uh, webinar will be on the Taylor project management uh, with ERP next. And uh, Mr. Gupteswar Doshi will uh, conduct this session. So Gupteswar Doshi is uh, the, uh, the director of the Indic Trans and he is uh, looking after the technology part. So he ha so he have some experience pro for last uh, from 2010 he have experience on the ERP next and the ERP so he may be uh, he is the best we can say that uh, know about the ERP next from last 13 to 12 13 to 12 years so uh, over to you uh, Dutteshwar sir. Let me close my screen and. Uh, Uh, thank you, Tejas, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our third webinar in this series. Uh, so this is uh, about ERPNX as a PM2. So we have given the name as a tailored because uh, today's topic, we are majorly focusing on the, uh, the processes that we have adopted. And as per that, whatever changes we have uh, made possible in that uh, to track uh, what we uh, want to achieve apart from what standard ERP next provides anyway so uh, this all starts with the this quote which we stuck somewhere that if you can't measure it you can't improve it so that's where it starts and that's where we get into this uh, uh, this project management tool and whatever achievements you we want to uh, uh, conquer with that uh, so so just take, just let's take a look at uh, what what is the project management or project management tool. So this is a internet definition uh, that we uh, have. So uh, one is uh, from the uh, from the PM uh, PMP uh, this thing, the project management definition and uh, project management tool is a so, so project management is a is a very wide term uh, in that anything can be a project uh, and to manage that there could be a requirement of a project management and that way it applies to various practices and different industry where where generally planning and execution is expected so uh, we may take an example of construction engineering product development and services which is a major focus of this webinar uh, because the case study that we have tried for ourselves is belong to there because we are it services company and that that's where we we, we would like to take uh, but each of these project management required uh, what I mentioned, like construction engineering project, and there are there, there could be various so, uh, and those vary very significantly with respect to the kind of business and practices it supports uh, supposed to cater to. Like uh, roughly, we can say construction may be for majorly for planning, procuring, consuming, and tracking the resources, along with meeting the desired progress and timeline with budgets. Uh, maybe uh, if we say engineering, so it is majorly for designing proof of concept, pilots, production, consuming and tracking resources. Again, uh, with meeting, meeting desired progress and timeline along with the budgets. Uh, for product development goes like full of desired features, then priority planning, then uh, the execution, uh, that may be alpha, beta, pilot, all those things, then test release. So these are different, uh, I mean, uh, having project management in these terminology, we would need different expertise and this thing. Uh, be the tool may be the same, just that implementation and the process would be different. Right now we are talking about the services. So where services major asset is the skill inventory that we have. So uh, the both the quality and quantity of skilled hours that we have and which gets utilized to, I mean, which should be get utilized to its fullest to address specific customer demands, uh, which may be for planning, prioritizing, uh, allocation uh, as per the priority 
getting specific challenges resolved within a timeline and budget, uh, which is very important. And uh, this is kind of a, uh, I mean, we can say, I mean, it's not appropriate, but it's a kind of a trading. Uh, as I said, it's a skill inventory. So uh, we have some skill sets and that we utilize. And that's a, I mean, time becomes a brick and mortar here, which we, uh, which we have and which we use to meet the things. And majorly it goes like, uh, we, est we estimate in the uh, in advance bill as we meet the ends so it goes like proposed versus bill time versus utilized time and how does that meet and these are the major challenges uh, where the project management or the, that tool uh, with respect to the services lies with so uh, there uh, they will have a challenges so so why why this pm tool is required basically okay so uh, in that sense, project management is a is a mammoth. I mean, it can do may, various other things. Like I, I uh, listed out few of the industries, so that way it caters to all of them. So that way it can do a lot of things. But it is always uh, we just have to see what are the possible ways. And uh, I mean, if you try to everything uh, as it leads to, then it will definitely get into the failures because you do not know what you want to achieve with that. So, uh, and you, we may get overwhelmed with whatever different features it provides. Everything is not required, uh, definitely. We, ha we have to utilize some part of it in, in chunks. That's how we, uh, we go uh, day by day. Uh, so most important factor where we, which requires is a focus on challenge on hand, what we have to solve today, then adding on next and next, that's the way we go. So, uh, uh, so those are the uh, basic, uh, I mean, the background and uh, maybe, uh, so just to give a more of that. So, I mean, earlier we had like uh, PM, PM certified uh, people with us and then we explored various PM tools like, I mean, like Redmine. I mean, it's not good to say uh, PM tool, but those are the issue trackers or that way. So Redmine, open project, um, test suits, then those are integrated with, I mean, even Google Sheets and everything. So uh, these are classical ones for issue tracking, time tracking, project planning, and those things. Uh, but it, I mean, it used to uh, deliver some some sense, which is respect to the life cycle of an issue track, uh, the the tracking of the task or the uh, or whatever project management uh, we have done uh, to track that. It was classical with that, but we could not, uh, we were not knowing what we want to get out of that. So it was like. Uh, I mean, the tool is there and we were using it. And I mean, it, it was it was not meeting the ends because we were not knowing what to do. Uh, majorly post pandemic, uh, the project operational team challenges. I mean, so that thing started and that really clears us a path that what are the challenges that we have? And uh, that gives us a direction where it should go. And uh, while evaluating on that front, so these tools uh, we did not find it suitable or appropriate or anything because we were not comfortable with that. Uh, so that's how we I mean, left it there. Then Frappe and ERP next comes to uh, natural choice that to a point. And uh, with that, uh, all all kind of pluses that we have with that and expertise. Uh, and it's it's first of all, it's readiness because it has some standard tools like the project, then uh, the, your task, the team. So those are the uh, I mean, basic levers that, that were there and extensing that to get, get to our challenges. That was a, uh, that was our motive. So that thought was going on. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it, uh, it triggers, uh, with, uh, or maybe it, uh, uh con gets concrete with the fra frappe compliance. So frappe compliance team comes to us and they, uh, they audited entirely. How do we manage the project? How do we execute the project? How do we document the project and everything? So that gives a, I mean, real key that yes, I mean, whatever we are thinking, we have to get to that uh, thing, and that has to be in ERP and extend frappe. That's where it all started. Uh, so, so majorly, uh, we we should be knowing the uh, what are the priorities, knowing. What is a must solve? Because as I said, it's a it's a very huge tool and a huge uh, opportunity uh, potential that we have if we want to uh, 
uh, maybe uh, adopt to it. But uh, what is a must have today? That is a, and uh, what is a basic priority that we understanding that. So what we, uh, what we wanted to address is measure and seek, seek to improve the utilization with firms most valuable asset, which are the employees and the customer. That is, that was in mind. It becomes a clear that utilization cannot be impacted in isolation. So in, 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 in best interest of the company, optimized resource utilization in tandem with project profitability and delivery success. That is very important. And that's how the health and within the budget and time was on target for uh, had to adopt to a PM tool. So that was the challenges and that's where it started. So what PM tool help us to achieve? So, uh, so it, it tries to achieve track and measure and report. So these are the basic three principles that is tried to achieve. So in terms of demonstration or anything, it's a very tiny piece, but the, the amount of effort, the entire organization level, different roles who had contributed to this idea and uh, reevaluating this. So that was a humongous activity to uh, uh, jot down all the ideas that we want to achieve, then uh, uh, then formulate it into some, some sort of uh, cycle then get it into some solution designing development uh, so development was a very small part because the homework was very ready the what we want to achieve was very uh, very clear and how do we want to do that was very clear so that's how it it's very it gets very concise to present it uh, here but that's that just about tracking measuring and reporting which is a billable utilization delivery success and the project profitability which is the outcome of entire process that's what uh, the PM tool does. So uh, just to understand this, I just want to take you through the processes that we follow. So uh, to my uh, right side, uh, uh, there are, so these are the typical project cycle processes that we follow. Like we have a kickstarts, we have a CRPs, which is a com, uh, conference room pilots, which turns out to be a, a business requirement document, which turns out to be a, solution design document if it is a customization uh, uh, project then the implementation which which comes naturally because erp next erp has to be implemented very well with with respect to the requirement because otherwise it's a very open tool and you can do various possible things but it has to be molded to your uh, processes and the business requirement so that's the implementation then customization of course the testing so both thing has to go hand in hand to meet the requirement which are uh, documented into the BRD. Then UAT, which is user acceptance testing, then key user training, hand holding, data migration, go live readiness, and the, then the, of course, that, I mean, go live is happened. I mean, that's not the end of the project. They're actually project start because their users, which are new to this ERP and uh, started using, and they, they will face the challenges for sure. So our hyper care comes into picture to handhold them to get over through that challenges to get to the success so uh, i mean from go live to success is a one, one of the major step that we have uh, identified and that addressed and that's how the hyper care takes care so while uh, governing to these processes we have different outcomes or input at some point like cost sheet is one of the uh, input which comes from the sales team like how the project should be executed, what are the expectations with respect to the customization, with respect to the implementation. Then, uh, of course, uh, as part of CRP, the BRD comes out. Then project planning, which happens, so how the things should be executed. Then the, the timesheet com comes into picture, The how the utilization is happening against that project plan or the cost sheet, uh, which is the first point. Then the, the milestone which we have to achieve and basically with respect to that, what billing we, we have to achieve, uh, so that tracking. And these two different cycles, uh, I mean, come to an end with respect to the audit reporting or audit meetings, then planning and steer committing. So where these uh, processes, these input and output are get vetted, verified, uh, and uh, maybe um, check, I mean, check and balances are done so that we just have to replan things, we just have to change something, we just have to change priority, or we, we have to communicate to the client or whatever it may be. So to keep these things in 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 uh, one plane in uh, sync, the, these are the important meetings which keeps happening to uh, yeah, keep the sync.
so with the, the, with these processes so today's demo what we are trying to cover cover are these are the topics that we want to cover so first is the project definition so to comply with the uh, majorly to comply with the frappe uh, compliances to have entire project definition as part of a erp next platform so we have done some definition changes so let me Oh, I'm really sorry. I did not share the screen. Oh, I will just quickly walk through what I have taken you through. So, uh, and I was mentioning this is a quote that we uh, that really triggers. Then uh, these are the factors. I mean, these are the what internet says. What I mean, this is how we look at the, any project management or any project management tool. Uh, so these are the why PM tool require uh, what what PM tool helps us to achieve. So that are the billable user utilization, delivery success, and project profitability. And uh, these are the processes that I was trying to refer. Uh, the the kickstarts yeah, the processes at the right side and the input and output at the left side and how that sync and this thing happens so so uh, and uh, these are the demonstration point that we are going to look into now yeah, really sorry for that yeah. mm -hmm. so first point is uh, uh, the project uh, definition so these are the some sample projects that we have uh, for demonstration so this is the project definition by default so standardly as i said the this is the project module which uh, by by default as a standard offers you the project the task the project template the type of project then timesheet the type of activities and cost and some standard report which are offered so definitely everything is built on top of that so first of all, it goes with the project definition. So here we just try to make it, make it uh, uh, comprehensive with respect to adding some additional fields or something. So field level customization that we have done kind of like where is the production server located? Where are the UAT server located? So these are the services like, is it on the Inditrans Frappe Cloud? Is it on the Frappe supported Frappe Cloud or the, on the client uh, owned uh, Frappe Cloud or any other server? Uh, then, uh, uh, any special node that we have to have with respect to the deployment AMC with respect to uh, different this thing uh, the communication goes on then the the stage of the project where it is right now so uh, be it I mean AMC stage CRP stage is it a deferred stage I mean or hyper implementation stage uh, then uh, we uh, uh, then we have a team of members uh, so this is a guideline how we want to execute this project so there are the member of uh, team members there are roles what what they supposed to do what is the start date what is the end date and what is the contribution that they supposed to uh, put in to execute this project as that role so that's a guideline i mean uh, it should be with this guideline but uh, actual timesheet will reveal how does that goes and whether it's plus or minus or whatever and that may be come as a defaulting or maybe learning or anything that depends on project to project and the case to case uh then we have a project documentation here wherein all the document that we make as as a as a cycle when we cycle through the project like business requirement document crp gap and lc sheet so there are 10 different document sheet that we identified that we create uh in a cycle when we go through the project and that all gets attached as and when that that stage is finished and we meet with that uh, stage or that document is ready so that this this makes my project comprehensive everything is uh, uh, covered here so be it uh, the order associated with that or the the definition and the server and everything then uh, what we follow is a uh, basically a project template so we have a i mean 
uh, the kind of project that we execute and uh, as we are learning with new new project that we are trying to uh, on board so one one does not fit all so that that has to be uh, i mean uh, moderate i mean modified with respect to the different causes and this thing so this is one of the template that we follow like it has from project initiation and planning based instance so these are the template which we import with any project we remove what is not required we add what is required additionally and that way we keep tracking the the progress with respect to that task whether it is in progress finished or what so that is a the progress of the project that been shown up with respect to each task the high level task uh, i would say uh, with respect to each high level task that uh, that has been identified as a, as part of this template and as i said this does not I mean so all the project that we do if it is a very customized centric project we have to have a very um, a tailor made uh, template this does not suit there or if it is a very implementation centric project then this may suit very well so these are the project template and with that respect uh, this gets basically uh, so these are the task which gets imported with that it has a certain structure so so it has four stages to be uh, to uh, to bifurcate with initiation and planning base instance setup execution and project closure then if we bifurcate that we have a further breakdown okay something okay fine so uh, th these are the task and dependent task uh, actually it should be uh, bifurcated under that tree so that you can see the uh, which 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 task belongs to which category and that we we uh, execute the project then second thing that we uh, <clears throat> track is a project milestone so this is a separate document that we are trying to create because execution and milestone wise some project differ a lot and that's where uh, we tend to lead this uh, i mean we tend to bifurcate this as a separate document wherein we specifically mention what are different milestone that we have to achieve what is the plan date and what is the billing percent that we are we are going to uh, uh, complete with that so that we track separately with respect to each project and uh this we track separately some some point in time maybe in future that task and this will merge and some point but because having milestone in that uh, that i mean that leads to confusion that's why we have right now kept it separate as a separate document and we use extensively for the all reporting than the project task so this is the project milestone that is being used uh so then uh, there is a a uh, project template and so uh, the the third thing is a comes is a cost sheet which is a very important document that we have identified over the uh, over the process uh, over the course of executing a project and so this is a cost sheet which comes from a sales team basically how they evaluate any requirement uh, how they uh, uh, put any cost to any any project contribution and thing so these are this has uh, broadly two sections one is a project customization and other one is a project implementation implementation goes like that i mean it's a standard module we just have to implement we know how the process goes uh, which module takes what time so based on that and understanding all the modules that is a part of the scope uh, we just put what are role which are required what is the number of month their involvement is required and what is the utilization percentage that is required so Uh, manager managing the things so they may uh, contribute 25% uh, functional consultant which is required highly then uh, 50% which is 
compensated by implementation engineer who does the job for the functional consultant so that way we bifurcate basically this is a project implementation which has utilization uh, what we are assumed to uh, put to get this execution then some average cost associated with those role and that that derives to a uh, some cost and that gives us a implementation cost cost which we may incur to get this execution done so that's a part 2 the part 1 comes i mean this is major thing that i mean and which may which may go wrong majorly so which can consist of a, what all things we have to customize to get this uh, implementation or delivery done uh, so which comes as second phase wherein all the all different module which we have to deliver what are the details uh, with respect to that module or that that feature we have to deliver uh, and what we look at as a per man per man day uh, effort that we look to get that delivered so that's a development cost that we put and uh, i mean with some uh, additional uh, overhead like requirement gathering phase and testing deployment or whatever so we come to some some figure uh, i mean based on that we that totals up to your number of man days which are required to deliver these customization which are mentioned so this is based on the agreement that is with the client and their agreement that these are the things we require and these features we require and some some rough level understanding in between and that that boils down to these many man days and we have some per day rate cost or something like that and based on that uh, multiplied by that we come to a customization cost so that's a total project cost that we uh, calculate to okay uh, and then we can maintain some project this thing so this is a majorly a uh, project uh, cost sheet okay uh, then uh, comes a so once a cost sheet is there that is been transferred so that's as an handover from sales team to an operation team because this is what we are uh, looking for and this is how we are, we are going ahead uh, or we, this is that this is how we have signed up the project and that goes up uh, for the execution then the crp and this thing happens each and every point that we have considered in the scope been weighted detailed out and uh, put it into business requirement because many things are one liner gets modif i mean got explained as a maybe a big feature or something uh, something reverse happen as well based on that uh, i mean this cost sheet is get re verified with respect to the operation so that we can make check in checks and balances and the correction whatever required so then the operation starts and while uh, doing that operation we simply maintain some checklist uh, which we, which we call a project initiation checklist wherein as a part of handover we give over the entire overview of that project so what is the project who is the customer their addresses their communication detail number of user that they have to so these are detail which are required over the over the course of execution for your server sizing for your expectation to set with respect to different team uh, and this thing uh, and uh, the point of contact and all those things nature of business uh, who is i mean who is going to provide the hosting and so whatever verbal communication that happens while on i mean uh, 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 getting awarded the project getting awarded so that all whatever discussed gets Uh, that set as an expectation because anything goes wrong wrong as an as an operation or execution we can verify this and we can correct that so even the number of report notification and things so whatever detail out we can make this, this is a project check, checklist so cost sheet and a checklist which comes from sales to operation so i mean that's a perfect handover which happens over a kick start meeting which happens with the client as well so all three parties are on same page sales team the customer and the operations team so that i mean all stakeholder on the same page uh then comes the milestone so uh, i i think i already shown that milestone how do we track that so after project checklist and over is done we uh, convert that document into milestones to track it further then then comes a uh, time sheet activity wise time sheet so right now we think task wise uh, task wise uh, uh um, time sheet is something an overhead because uh project uh, plan is not that we create once and it can be uh, followed through entire process uh, entire project life cycle be it a six month or year it changes every week every day sometimes and uh, changing that is very cumbersome so 
what we do is we have kept it as an activity wise. So each of the uh, each of the role has certain activities which which has been uh, given to them. Like uh, so, if if I see this this is source and the timesheet associated with that. So uh, it has certain activities like what they can what they have done what kind of activity i mean within these days and what are the uh, hours that they have booked for which project so line item wise they can fill in the timesheet weekly daily however they feel to and uh, this is how the actuals which are going against whatever has been defined is captured here so if i go to any new timesheet And if I select a project, uh, I necessarily be a member of that project, then only I can fill the timesheet. Otherwise, I cannot. And depending on role with which I have been onboarded to that project, I can see only those many activities. Uh, and based on that, and only I can uh, this thing. So, uh, so this is the this is the way the timesheet is captured, and that's entirely what we do to capture the data. Apart from whatever standard modules are there and this thing, uh, these are the additional detail that we capture. Now, looking at the, uh, the audits and reports, how do we uh, measure that or this thing? So let's jump on to the, uh, so one more iteration that we have done or one more uh, version of that cost estimation or something. So we have done for one of our clients, which is the InfraBit. So they did in SAP implementation and some, some more. So they do it cost sheeting this cost sheet this way uh, so these are like these are the roles uh, what are different modules number of months and number of weeks that they are planning for then that gets bifurcated into number of hours or days that they are going to spend on on site or off site uh, offshore and that contributes to their detailing then their if it is a uh, online then what is the per diem rate lodging and whatever whatever required uh, then total resource cost, then this cost, and then the total estimation. This is the other way that how they do because their their model is more over online, offline, wherein we do some of the portion online and majority of the work uh, offline. So our is, uh, so this is a different version uh, altogether, depending on their uh, processes and practices. Uh, so what all things we try to track here? So first thing goes like a project-wise profitability. Uh, we try to uh, cover up like so we have project then the type of project that defines many of the things like which category which bracket uh, turnover and uh, project uh, proposal uh, pro project uh, offer and this thing so that defines project type uh, governs those things even the utilization of the resources are governed by that these are the estimated costing uh, based on the how the project was awarded these are the hours which were booked against that project and based on that what is the expenses with respect to different role what is the cumulative expenses that we see and we see uh, how it is performing against the estimated costing and if we see uh, in line with the project task completion and the milestone completion we get to know that this utilization is it in sync with the milestone utilization uh, milestone completion or not so this is one way of looking at it so this is a high level picture that we see same way if we have to uh, kind of dig deep dive then we have a role wise profitability wherein each project and each role how how they are performing whether they are they were expected to uh, uh, put in that those many efforts or uh, going plus minus whatever so this gives a role wise profitability give that picture more uh, granular than the just the project wise so again so this is the report which helps us track the the uh, again the role wise utilization of that so, <clears throat> uh, then comes uh, uh, there are there are some uh, like uh, supporting report i mean uh, that is uh, that is for like a resource utilization report and so wherein we can see uh, like how the resource utilization is going so every resource is a 40 week availability then if i say 15 days then it's 80 days 80 hours week availability then how the hours are getting booked 
the how do we see the utilization this is more over to plan the resources and onboard any new project and that way so this this is one one way of looking at it and then other is a if you have to onboard some project with respect uh, on certain date and completion as a certain date so we can see a resource availability report which which shows that uh, if i say if i if i want something on 29th so who are who are the people who are available with with respect to different role i can uh, filter it out with different role i do not have much data so i am not filtering that way but and what is the utilization that we are seeing within that date so the further planning and this thing so these are supporting report not not per se uh, the profitability or health um, then time sheet defaulter report so that we can check is there any defaulter so defaulter is i mean your uh, number of working days 22 23 whatever your leaves holidays whatever minus that and then what you supposed to fill and you are not filling up for whatever reason so that we capture and uh, that check we do so that's a again supporting report uh, okay so uh, then majorly uh, huh, then list of milestone delayed so this is uh, i mean with respect to the time sheet filling and expenses booked uh, so percentage of that being checked with respect to this whether the milestone were expected whatever uh, with percent and this thing whether that is being expect i mean um, being filled uh, fulfilled or not i mean that gives us uh, the health whether we are going the right direction in putting that effort or we are not meeting the ends and we just putting we just going going on and putting the efforts so as i said so these are the different data sets data points which are collected and presented in a certain way but the audit and steer code defines the it's it's uh, it's a state whether it's a plus or minus it does not do it itself right now but uh, this is how this is being managed and uh, one more thing is we just try to we just have some financial year uh, uh, planning and with respect to one more tracking that we do is what are different project types with respect to what are different orders that are expected how many have how many has been booked till date what is the conversion percent with respect to the quarter we are in and this thing what is the target amount and uh, what is order booking and that percent that conversion so that number tracking is one of the option uh, and one of the thing that goes in in parallel and apart from that uh, I, I already shown you the the number of this thing i mean uh, reports which we execute as a part of operation uh, uh, majorly The, the with respect to the health and uh, profitability so uh, these are the major uh, additional activity or additional thing that we tried to put in so that as i said we have a we, we are holding a uh, skill assets and their utilization uh, their planning their utilization is a, uh, a primary thing or the main thing that we have to uh, achieve and with respect to that we have certain projects which are going so earlier before this where, where we coming from is before this we had a company wide profitability which always see an average effect even though something goes very wrong but if certain project of that that kind uh, i mean increases in in future so the entire profitability will topple down so that's where we lead to a project wise uh, a health checkup which is necessary uh, and uh, because it is said uh, the the pm tool the erps the crm are very essential tool to uh, essential tool to adopt to set your culture because uh, i mean I, we are seeing a lot of cultural changes with this tool being adopted and uh, the the kind of transparency being uh, seen across the team be it a the sales head to uh, the the junior developer that in the uh, the project so otherwise they were in silos everybody is working but nobody has that visibility how the things are going but now all this data being captured all this data being represented in a certain way gives everyone a clarity as part of audit team or audit repo uh, audit meeting or review meeting that i mean whatever efforts that we are putting whether those are going in the right direction or not or going the wrong direction so that that transparency we wanted to build and that is something we we been experiencing from last 
uh, let's say this uh, six months or something like that and uh, the other uh, infra bit I, we mentioned so they are using they are seeing some benefit as well so that's how we see and case study and i hope that would help you uh, i mean get some input and this thing to adopt to uh, your your own process or something so uh, so any questions or anything or anything that uh, you want me to elaborate uh, kindly yes yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, anything yeah. Uh, I could, uh, I could, sure. It was a nice session. So basically, uh, as I've gone through the session, so I think that it's more sort of a documentation tool uh, for the project management in which we are doing the cost and building in the timesheets. Uh, so I just want to ask that uh, if we are uh, managing the projects, like we are creating tasks in Epics, like we have the various project management frameworks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are moving in that way too, or is this like a sort of a uh, like a documentation tool right now? No, so documentation is in one part, which is uh, which is required mm -hmm. as part of a compliance to have everything in one place, because many mm -hmm. times the document lies uh, offline, sometime on Google Drive, some drive or something like that. But uh, finding it in one place is difficult. So that's one part of it. But what we are trying to do is we are trying to define a a budgeting of that project with respect to cost sheet or mm -hmm. maybe the expectation and budgeting with respect to the cost sheet and uh, expectation mm -hmm. being set uh, i mean uh, i mean kind of a window wherein we have to execute within that so that uh, i mean while achieving the success we just have to be sure that we are within the timeline because there are milestones uh, which are defined which has the due dates which has some uh, percentage achieve mm -hmm. percentage to be achieved with respect to the billing then there is a cost sheet which defines the your boundary line how much you have to how how much you should spend mm -hmm. and the actuals mm -hmm. which are coming from the time sheet we are trying to bind all all three just that we are not tracking with respect to task as on today mm -hmm. we might re, we mm -hmm. might reach to that stage tomorrow but that is not i mean mm -hmm. as i said we are just trying to cover mm -hmm. the must haves today so the task okay, wise yeah. is not a must have it can be done other way other, otherwise around maybe while we are done with that we may i mean the kind of concerns we will see mm -hmm. in the future that may mm -hmm. lead to the task wise uh, tracking as well uh, but it's mm -hmm. not just document mm -hmm. documentation that we are doing it's this is this is all we are trying to achieve with this yeah yeah totally got it i think it's really impressive the way you have presented so uh, i have uh, one another query as you said that uh, for the time sheets now uh, we have rows which are connected to the activities and then we are going to connect uh, create the time sheets for the same so uh, so the arts are going to be uh, filled by the uh, the role to be assigned or it, it is going to be out of paste as as soon as the task is being started by a user uh, sorry, I did not get you right. Uh, I think it's related to tracking. For example, now someone has done some task and all. So he mm -hmm. will go in the timesheet and going to log in. So it's yeah. not like that if you are performing some task in this system uh, that is uh, allocated to you and the mm -hmm. time will be auto fetched in the timesheets. But look, and the thing I'm, that the timesheet will be auto created as per the task. Mm -hmm. time no, right. actually no, I mean, spent. Uh, so as i said mm -hmm. we are not tracking as per the task so that's one thing okay. and it's not okay. auto tracking as okay. well so people are putting mm -hmm. their own uh, whatever uh, uh, i mean task done either daily or any time in the week or weekly at least so week is a max uh, that we have kept mm -hmm. so they they are putting mm -hmm. whatever activity they have performed in that uh, week for that mm -hmm. project or mm -hmm. the the number of project they are allocated to depending on the utilization percentage as assigned so they are putting it manually okay. right now okay 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 yeah. uh, so in the uh, one last question like in the project doc type uh, we are, i think it's uh, in the standard we have we can measure the progress yes. of the projects so uh, can you just yeah. show me that uh, how you are just missing it right now in your system uh, yeah so this is a standard doc type and uh, mm -hmm. And uh, here, the way to measure the progress is uh, based on the task. So if you have task allocated, mm -hmm. and then you have a percent complete method, whether you want to do it manually, okay. uh, you declare what mm -hmm. the percent, 
it is based on the completion mm-hmm. of the time the number of tasks gets completed against the number of tasks open mm-hmm. based on that or the mm-hmm. progress of the task mm-hmm. so cumulatively uh, what is a uh, uh, what is a mm-hmm. percent completion of that task 50% the average out of that mm-hmm. or the based mm-hmm. on the task weightage we can give weightage to the task and their completion so either of that it, this is a standard what i am trying to see uh, show uh, so okay. based on that we can uh, com- i mean measure the progress of the project but uh, we find that i mean this is merely this is not sufficient to track what we wanted to achieve so we just extended this further with the uh, with mm-hmm. the with the other like budgeting and cost sheeting cost sheeting and all that thing. okay okay totally got it so you have also shown a project milestone so is it a custom doc type that you have created yeah yeah yes yes yeah project milestone is a custom doc type uh, that we okay. that we are uh, uh, i mean tracking and as i said uh, we are keeping it apart from the mm-hmm. uh, other task because task as well has a mm-hmm. checkbox to uh, mark as a mi- milestone mm-hmm. uh to avoid mm-hmm. any clutter right now i mean we just mm-hmm. want to track mm-hmm. this clean and simple mm-hmm. yeah okay yeah that's from me and thank you guptishwar for answering my queries it was a really nice and insightful session thank you thank you very much yeah uh, so uh so we are open for questions